Hey all, I want to show you a photo that I took of a missing persons poster. I took it during an overnight trip to the very beautiful town of Keene, New Hampshire. As you can see from the photo, the missing person is Marble Arvidson. Marble went missing on August 27, 2011, after leaving his foster home in nearby Brattleboro, Vermont. Brattleboro is about a half an hour away from Keene, if I can remember. I actually used to live in Keene for a very brief time. And so it's natural that some two months after his disappearance, his poster would appear in downtown Keene. From time to time, I look at this photo and I check in on the case. Sadly, the police who have been investigating this case have made very little progress since Mr. Arvidson went missing and I don't suspect it's for lack of trying. In an article published at about the 10 year mark, the police said that they had interviewed about 50 people regarding Marble's disappearance. Rather, I think one of the reasons why this case has been so hard to get information on is because Marble disappeared during an historic hurricane. Marble went missing right as Hurricane Irene slammed into the Northeast it hit Vermont particularly hard. Trees were felled, creeks and rivers went over their banks, bridges were damaged, houses were damaged, millions of dollars in damage was done to the state of Vermont. And so to me at least, it's easy to understand how the police could be behind the eight ball. One of the reasons why this case is interesting to me is because I actually remember Hurricane Irene quite well, and I remember August 27, 2011 quite well. See, early that morning, my wife and I got one of the last flights out of Detroit. We were heading back from a trip to the West Coast and had taken a red eye the night before, and this was just hours before the FAA announced that they were going to close down most flights on the eastern seaboard. We left Detroit and we hit some of the headwinds of the storm, and I remember the plane hitting turbulence over Lake Ontario. Our trip to the West Coast was a little under two weeks, and by the time that we returned to our home in the upper Hudson Valley here in New York, we were totally exhausted. It was like late morning, and I remember going to bed and waking up the next morning to the sound of my brother-in-law pounding on our door. See, sometime that afternoon while I was sleeping, Hurricane Irene picked up steam and started to batter our area. I live about 150 feet or so from the Hudson River, and I remember the flooding that we had. I remember our streets were like rivers themselves, and at one point I was bailing water out of our basement before I could locate an electric pump. It was, it was a lot of water. For over a week, the Hudson River had this chocolate milk color to it, and there were trees and docks and boats that were flowing down the river towards the sea. And there was a lot of damage where we were, but nothing like the damage that occurred in Vermont. It was a disaster. And shortly before the hurricane hit the Brattleboro area, sometime around 2 p.m., Marble left the foster home that he was living in, and that was right before the hurricane really hit. He left a note for his roommates and family that said he would return in about a half an hour, but he didn't come back. The next day, they reported his disappearance to the Brattleboro police. I think it's pretty safe to say that this must have been a very tough missing persons case to work on with all the destruction that happened. It's also safe to say that it's reasonable to assume that Marble was washed away in the floodwaters from Hurricane Irene. People go missing in the outdoors all the time. And Marble really liked to go hiking apparently, so I think a lot of people assumed that he met his fate out on a trail with all the trees that were down and all the flooding that was happening. But something makes his disappearance, at least to me, more disturbing than him simply vanishing into nature. And that's the fact that there was somebody that arrived at Arvidson's house that, who he left with, and this person has never been identified. And so, in my mind, that throws this case in a different direction. Could this 
person who Arvidsson left with, who wasn't known to his roommates, could they have played a part in his disappearance? To this date, some 10 years later, this person has not been identified. They haven't come forward, and the police don't know who they were. And that right there is a big dead end. Now, of course, this person could have been a victim of Hurricane Irene as well. But they also add another dynamic to this story, which is foul play. Could the person that Marvel Arvidsson left with right before the storm hit have something to do with his disappearance? According to an article published this year, the Brattleboro police interviewed about 50 people in the days following his disappearance and is now re-interviewing some of them, but there were just no leads. Several years ago, an age-progressed image of Marble was released. This image and Marble's foster families and his biological mother, who lives in New Mexico, are what keeps his case alive. If Marble is still alive, he's about 27 years old. And if he's alive, he has the answers to his disappearance. Every missing person is a, is a tragedy to the family and friends and loved ones of the person who disappears. According to stories, it's unlikely that Marble ran away. He was apparently enjoying his time in Brattleboro and was set to begin his senior year in high school and had plans for going off to college. I'd like to think that if he was carried away by the floodwaters of Hurricane Irene, that someday his body will be recovered and someday he will be given a proper burial. And I hope, God forbid, that if he was the victim of foul play, that the perpetrator or perpetrators will be tracked down in part due to posters like this one that maybe jog somebody's memory or let them uncover something that they know about that they didn't speak up about at the time. Sometimes people feel comfortable talking about cases years later, and perhaps that's what will happen in the case of Marble Arvidsson. But for the time being, as his mother says, there hasn't been a single clue. The best hope right now is that a missing person poster, something as simple as this, may bring a memory or some piece of information out of hiding. I want to thank you for letting me share this photo with you. I have included some information on the case in the description below, and I hope that there will be some resolution to this. Thank you and God bless you.